What's going on guys? Victor here. Today, this guy right here is going to put me on my first sword. Isn't that right? Yes sir. We're going to try our best. We got Zach. Jacob, say what's up. What's up? What's up guys? And then big shout out and thank you to Will and Chris for taking us out. Cheers. On, guys. on this beautiful 37 CBZ. Here we got Asher. Hi. Asher. Say what's up ladies. Good morning. <laughs> They're all a little tired. We had a big sushi night last night, but we are going out of Hillsboro today, getting rigged up. You guys are gonna see the beautiful lighthouse here in a second. And yeah, I'm very excited. Hopefully we get on our first sword today. All right, so right now we're firing our tip bait. We normally drive uh, south, current pushes north. So we're gonna do a U-turn right here. And that's gonna prevent our jug and our tip from getting tangled. Got two lights going. This is uh, our whip right here with the wax loop. And this is our long line clip. Always attached to the main line, gaff towards it. We're gonna let Elliot know that we're ready. You good? Let down. We're gonna drop that about 900 revs and we're gonna make a U turn and drive back up onto uh, the line. Lucky throw, Jake. Yeah. <laughs> so, you guys see, Jake's letting out that rod. That's gonna be the buoy rod. And then Zach is handling the tip rod. And we do that in two different times. We stagger the bait so that way they don't get tangled because you're dealing with. 1,500 to 2,000 feet of line out there, and that could be a giant mess, so. Already on. All right, so what do we do now with this one? Just let it hang? Well, I think we got a swordfish on. I'm the boat out. Untie that rod. Untie it? Yeah, please. We got that. Slack so me how, do you, how do you know he's on? He's, he's stalling us out. Himself. We're. We're on uh, a drag setting right now where we'd be pulling the lead off the bottom, no problem. And we're, as you can see, we're stalled out. So there's a fish there. That's incredible. Rick and I have done this like two or three times now, and we've never gotten one. We fished with Nick Stancic, who you guys know is really, really good. But right now in our area, there's just been a huge influx of swordfish to the area. We've been here for 10 minutes and already have one on. This the is incredible. bait hasn't even been in the water for 10 minutes. No, it's unreal. You're doing it, Zach, you're really doing Better it. Better to be lucky than good, right? That's the cool thing about sword fishing is you're, you know, you're fishing 1,500, 2,000 feet down and you have no idea how big the fish is. It could be swimming the lead up right now. It might jump, we have no idea. Yeah, so we pulled that fish off at about 500 revs. I'm gonna go ahead and make another drop. Our first fish pulled off, so what we're doing is we're going back to kind of the same area we just got bit, and we're re-dropping, so have the boat in gear, Zach's letting out the bait, and you don't want to do it from a standstill boat, otherwise it'll just twirl your bird on the way down. You want some resistance in there so that weight's going out nice and easy, just like that. Right there. There it is. Drop yeah, it. there it is, right there. Drop it. You getting that in, Jake? So what do you think, he's just munching it? He's just whacking it right now with its bill. So we're trying to either it's gonna eat it and the rod's gonna load over or it's gonna slack up. So you, you put tension on it. If they slack off, they're gonna swim the, the lead up. They'll have 12 pounds of uh, weight behind the hook. So they'll swim that up. Or like Elliot's doing right now, he's dropping to them, feeding the fish. You don't wanna pull it too soon. And uh, we'll, we'll almost hit them with full drag for about, you know, 20, 10, 10, 20 seconds, something like that. There you go. Did he stall? So he's on. So if you guys can only imagine, we're fishing 1,600 feet of water. It's pitch black down there. You have a bait that's only about a foot long, and you're trying to hook a swordfish with all that stretch and all that line. So you got to hit him at the perfect time, and it's kind of just like give and take. You see if he sticks. If he doesn't, you feed it back to him, and you're just waiting for that line to um, or that rod to double over and really come tight. Go. Perfect. Man. All right. 
here. See how big this thing is. Watch out here, he's gonna be up on the surface. He's coming up right now. Vic, he's gonna be over here, man. Oh, there he, there he oh, Vic, guy. you got that? Oh, he's a little guy. He's a little guy. Yeah. Is he a keeper? Yeah, he's, yeah, he's a keeper. Get ready with the gap in the back, yeah, Jacob. Yeah, gap yeah, in the back. The longer gap he's right next to me. This one's a little mangled. We got enough baits to where we can put a new one in. Yeah. Good, way, did a good job. Good job, guys. Yeah. Awesome. No, he's good. 47. What is Sweet. it? What is it, guys? I think it's got to be 47. 43 or 47. He's right there. So. All right, so grab on it. Good job. All right. I feel like you guys are not excited at all. About uh, we're very excited. We're excited. I'm thrilled. Of course we're excited. We got sword First sword boat. ever for us. Oh, that's a little puppet. Asher, but it's like... What do you think? Cool. First cool. sword. Cool. 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 Hell yeah. Let's get you another one. Cool, what do you think? Zach. Thank you. Yeah, we're gonna get another one. That, that, Let's upgrade. Yep. Oh, baby, first there ever swordfish. There you go. Get what in there, Asher. Asher, stand up with him. What do you think, Asher? We excited about this one? Yeah. 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 I mean, first I have sword, buddy. First sword. What an gnarly animal, guys. Look at that. Gladiator of the sea. I mean, just look at how big his sword is compared to his body. He's got like half his length is his. Big old sword right there. They use this down there, slash squid, bait fish, whatever it is. Kill them. And these fish are ice cold when you bring them up because down there the water's probably like 50, 60 degrees. Huge eyeballs if you take a look at that. That's to allow as much light in as possible. Because these fish down there, it's pitch black. You got that signature sickle fin. And best of all, this guy's gonna taste great. I can't wait to cook him up for all these people. So oh, I was What's flying the drone while they were doing everything, and this is a total team effort. So Elliot is on the rod. I don't know even who was harpooning it, but you got a harp. Captain Chris, Chris over here. Captain, Captain Chris. Chris. Captain Chris. We got a harpoon guy. You got a gaff guy, and then when these fish get really big, like three, four hundred pounds, you want to stick as many things in that fish as possible. Because it's like Zach said, I don't care how long we have them on. Not a caught fish until it's in the boat. That was an excellent Oh yeah, my pleasure. <laughs> Giant eyeball. Look at the colors. Yo, he's on there now, right? Is that a big one, dude? Right now, the rod is. He's on, right? So you're gonna see when that rod doubles over, you'll back, you'll back off the drag. drag right? and stop reeling. Yeah, you don't want to put too much pressure on them. Even though it's an electric reel, still pull the hook on them every time. I think we had three or four bites total today, but this is the only guy that we got to the boat. Like Zach said, doesn't count until they're in the boat. But we got one, and that's all that counts. Big old eyeball. Oh yeah, you guys gotta eat the eyeballs, huh? I and then Zachy that's true. here, he's going to show you guys how to core this thing. Take the fins off. They're very dirty animals. Very. So you guys see all this stuff? They live in, they literally sit in the mud all down there. It's all muddy. And all this black stuff that's coming off of their skin mud. is super fibrous and just nasty. Give me a burn. Get rid of his mohawk. Yep, haircut time. I'd say so. There's one of them right there. 
This is what you're supposed to eat? Yep, Starburst, here's the other one. Okay, so this is part of the eyeball, like the middle of the eyeball? Yeah, this is like, I guess their pupil, I don't really know. It? Yeah, it's so cool. First swordfish. Cheers. Congrats on your first sword there today, buddy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you actually swallow it? I did. You gotta power it down. Now it's, it's, if you got a texture issue, this is not for you. No, it's no. weird. It's very different. It's, it's strange. Yeah. Gross, a crazy right? stomach. Yeah, look at that lining. Oh, it was just full of air. You got something in them right here. Some beaks. Oh, squid. 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 They digest all of the tentacles like that. This is actually, you know when you pull apart a squid and the, yep. it's that pen line yep. that they call it? I think it's the mantle? Or something like that, yeah. yeah. That's what that is. We're gonna let the swordfish sit overnight and it's gonna allow the meat to kind of release some of that tension. It's gonna loosen up and Zach says you get a much better product. But you wanna get rid of all the guts or anything that can kind of seep into the meat. And also when you open up the gut, you can allow ice to get in from the inside out because it's a thick animal, you know, and this is a small fish. You get a 300 pound fish, you want to stuff it from the inside out to keep all that meat nice and cool. They're actually, because they, they swim so cold in such cold water or whatever, pretty sure they have a different like heating system. Swordfish, don't quote me on that, but that's that's something it I It sounds about right. You, you catch shacks in the backyard? Yeah. Yeah? Have you caught a tarpon back here? No. You want to catch a tarpon? I've caught a baby tarpon now. What about a snook? I've seen him, but no. Seen him? up right at the side here. Gonna go in with the six inch Dexter. And I'm just gonna try to find the swordfish's spine and see how we do on the first swordfish fillet. Oh, it almost seems like a, a shark pattern. Yeah, it, I think it's the most similar to, especially size wise. So all I'm doing right now is just running it along the length of the spine until I get to the swordfish's backbone. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Find the swordfish spine. And I'm flaying them from both sides because it's such a big animal to work with. You don't want to mess up. So he should be freed on both sides, and look at that. We got a big slab of swordfish right there. And if this fish was a lot bigger, I would not have done it like this. I would have probably gone from both sides, cut it down the, the middle, and then removed it from there. Okay, there's the other side. And then all you're left with is the swordfish spine right there, which I'm sure the catfish in the canal will be very happy with. So for tonight's dinner, the best part of the fish is gonna come for right, from right here. And I'm just gonna go like this. That'll be enough for us for dinner, where you can get a good amount of steaks. And then now, all right guys, I'm gonna continue to portion this up. We're gonna make bags for friends, for family, neighbors, and then I'll catch you guys in the kitchen. It's not your traditional swordfish steak that you see, because this is a little guy. The bigger the fish gets, it'll be much bigger, but cut it about an inch thick, maybe a little bit bigger. You got a nice piece of swordfish. Mm. All right, guys, so first of all, take a look at this kitchen. You guys see we are not at our house, but we're actually at Will's house, the owner of the boat, and I get to cook for them, which I absolutely love to do. So brought the swordfish inside, looking good, and I patted these really dry because we're gonna do a high heat pan sear and I wanna get the outside super crispy. This is a fatty fish, so it's gonna hold in a lot of flavor and you can give it a nice crispy outside layer. And we're gonna season it with of course, Vic brought his garlic powder. He doesn't leave the house without it. Garlic powder, onion powder, and paprika. And I'm just going to season one side as well. Swordfish has a lot of inherent flavor, and the reason I like it so much is it's got an actual fat content. It lives in real cold water, and these fish just gorge all day long and just develop a lot of fat in them. Pepper. Okay. A generous amount of salt and onion powder. Okay, so for our starch, we're gonna go in with some gnocchi. And what I'm gonna do is, I like crispy gnocchi. So first I boiled them, and then we're gonna 
pan fry them as well. So check those babies out. So we're gonna go into a saute pan with our gnocchi. I have some olive oil and butter in here as well. No gnocchi left behind. I'm gonna go in with the asparagus, 400. And then we got two nonstick pans, medium heat. Gonna go in with some avocado oil. So now we're gonna go in with our swordfish. Seasoned side down. Oh baby, look at this. Our gnocchis are crisping up, getting golden brown. Over here with our crispy gnocchi, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of fresh garlic at the very end, because we don't want this to overcook. Okay, we'll check on our swordfish, making sure this one side's not getting burnt. Look at that. See, that's what we're going for. We wanna get a good crust on one side. You do 90% of your cooking on the one side, and that's all you need. So, we're gonna hit our gnocchi with some fresh Parmesan. Crepe tomatoes cut in half, a little bit of red onion. Some sugar bombs. And then this is kinda like a little play on chimichurri. So I just, I uh, pulsated some parsley, basil, sugar, vinegar, and then olive oil at the very end to prevent it from getting bitter. And we're gonna just kinda do like a little chimichurri tomato salad, and it's also gonna be a just good fresh sauce for our fatty swordfish. Get a little crispy Parmesan gnocchi. Some asparagus. Now everyone gets a piece of swordfish. You guys can see it's still super tender. Look at the way that fish just falls, but you still have that great pan seared, crispy outer layer. Okay, now we got our tomato chimichurri. Feast! Hold on, I, I was in the garage and I just heard Elliot said it's the best swordfish he ever had. Man, I'm in agreement. This is yeah. I ate a lot of swordfish. This is hands down the best swordfish I've ever had. 100%. 100%. It's there, man. It's you great. guys have eaten a lot perfectly of swordfish. Cooked. Yeah, it's perfectly cooked. Now we're just getting started. It's literally perfectly cooked. This is mm. enough. I need more. Oh yeah, perfectly cooked. <laughs> No, please yeah, tell me, please it. tell me that there's more. Uh, it is yeah. fantastic. And this, so much. Unless this guy eats it. I don't know where it goes, but he fits it in there somewhere. Harry took two pieces. <laughs> oh, he already did too. What do you think, Asher? Good. 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 You like it, Asher? What? The fish. Yeah. The swordfish. Your, yes. fir your first swordfish. That's right. That's right. Yeah, it's your first. It's pretty cool, isn't it? I'm very excited to cook for these people, and that's what I love about this sport is, you know, me, Will, Chris, I knew Elliot and Zach, but I never knew these guys, and here we are. You know, you got age gaps of almost 20 years, and this sport just brings so many people together, and then at the end of the day, the food is the king. It just all comes full circle, and seriously, thank, thank you so you. much, Will. Thank you very much. For a killer day. Thank, and it was thank a you, man, fantastic. appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. I mean, look, look at this. It's got a little crispy outer layer, and I think, a lot of people love swordfish, but a lot of people don't like it, and I think it's because they overcook it. Don't overcook your swordfish. I'll tell you what, it wasn't a big fish, but it's big in flavor. Mm. Absolutely. Thank you guys for watching at home, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.